Run happy, standing at Claiborne Farm. Hi everybody and welcome to Game Plan with Marcus Hirsch. I'm Dan Ullman alongside DRF analyst, handicapper, turf rider extraordinaire Marcus Hirsch. We have three stakes spot plays on the Travers Saturday card to discuss and we'll begin with the ballerina. Let's take a look at this field. It's fillies and mares going seven furlongs on the main track. Marcus, the number two come dancing, is your six to five morning line favorite and her merits are obvious on paper. She's run some very fast races. She's exiting a second place finish to Midnight Bizu, who will see later on the Saturday Saratoga card in the personal ensign. What's the knock other than the short price? Well, um, I got a couple things on her. First of all, uh, she got good so fast over the winter, and I'm a big believer in trajectories. Like when horses, you know, later in their career have a quick ascendancy, they, it often doesn't prove especially sustainable. I feel like this horse really got into a very particular rhythm in New York City, both at Aqueduct and Belmont. But she's run, there's no question she's run fast, Dan, I think. But uh, if you look at the nature of her trips, all of her like, superior performances have come when things were very favorable to her. She was either outside pressing or stalking in the clear or managed to make a clear lead herself. Um, I don't think that she's going to get either one of those trips today. She's also at a track where, while she won last year, she didn't run any of the outrageous figures she did and downstate um the inside draw and if you watch the horse i'm sure you know her well she's a kind of this massive horse um she's fast in a way but she's not quick uh seven eighths to a mile is her game and you know i don't know that i just don't think she's going to be able to out sprint a minute to start him and i think mia mischief is going to show speed taking away the opportunity to get off the rail and come around I don't like the trip she's going to get. I know she worked fast. I actually liked her very last work. I watched the whole string of them that were available and didn't thought, I didn't think she worked especially well before then. I just think she's going to get the wrong trip and is, um, I'm, I'm assuming that people are going to assume she's going to come back in the same form she left. And I just think that in uh, the horse I like here, Separation of Powers, you have a horse who's going to get a much better trip at a better price who's already shown that she excels at Saratoga, won the test um, over this same track last year. But the kind of trip I hope she's going to get Saturday, sitting back and making a run. Um, and if you know the prices that are listed hold, and I think that's entirely possible, I think she's she's a little bit of value. I'm going to try to hook her up with Mia Mischief, who I think was prepping in the Honorable Miss and is going to be generally ignored. Uh, Separation of Powers just barely beat her in the test last year. Um, and even the horse that won the Honorable Miss meant to start him, she might be the quickest horse of all out also try to get her into the exact, uh, I'm just going to try to beat, get come dancing out of the first two holes. I agree with you about the trip scenario. Separation of powers is so versatile. We just saw her on the lead in her most recent race right. at Belmont. She is very, very comfortable sitting off the pace. Come dancing will be forward. I think Mia Mischief is going to be more aggressively ridden this time around. I do Minute too. to Sardom is a speed horse. She just figures to sit a great trip and should be prominent swinging into the stretch for Chad Brown. We'll move to the turf for the Ballston Spa Stakes. Let's take a peek at this field. We're going a mile and a sixteenth on the turf. Very tough race for our colleague David Aragona to make a morning line. He eventually landed against the Chad Brown trained horses with the three secret message who's coming out of the Diana. She had some trouble in that race. She certainly wasn't going to beat Sister Charlie with a clear trip. She's an honest horse. I don't think she has such an edge on this field that I would want to take a short price on her. Yeah, that's exactly how I saw it, Dan. And just looking at the entire composition of the race, um, I mean, if you can if you compare it to last year's, where you had Kador and Hawksmore, you know, admittedly they weren't at the very top of the class, but I, I do think that um, they were they're a step, a whole cut above all the horses in this race, really. Um, I, a secret message is fine. I, it, she ran a solid race. She is what she is, I think, at this point, which is, you know, she's a nice enough horse. I don't think that she's a standout or even worth a play at three to one, personally. And I kind of feel that way about the whole field. I mean, the X factor is Masha on the outside for Chad Brown. She only won a one other than allowance last time, but she did overcome trouble and made a flashy run. She also has a form line uh, from last summer in France through Omerique, beaten three quarters of a length at Joville. And, uh, you know, Omerique, who is sidelined, unfortunately, for probably the remainder of the year, is a very high class performer. This source could be pretty good, but it's Chad Brown. 
her merits are going to be obvious to all the wise guys. She's going to take money. The horse that interested me, Dan, um, was who also ran in this race last year, Indian Blessing, who's kind of a it's a it's a very unusual situation in that she came from England for trainer Ed Walker and stayed. The owner is a Hong Kong based owner and uh, campaign horses in England, campaign horses in Hong Kong likes to travel and they definitely traveled this horse. Um, I'd say that uh, well, her first lady at Keeneland was the best of the three races. She had trouble. She finished really well behind the Raving Beauty and Donum Bruja. Those are very legitimate group one, grade one animals. At her Boston Spa, she was rank early, and that was just a parade race, as I'm sure you remember. I mean, the two horses just ran around the track, one, two. No one ever came close to them. This horse was the only one, really, I thought, finishing at all. I do think that she just looks like an American turf horse to me. I don't see any of her races overseas that were as good, definitely not as good as the First Lady, probably not as good as the balls to the spa. I don't really even care about her overseas form, except to the extent that she seems to be in comparable form to last year. So I expect her to run at least as well. And if she could settle a little bit better, or Laurent Giroux hasn't ridden her before, um, it would definitely help her chances. I don't know if she's going to be every bit of the 8th one morning line, but I do think she's going to be a price. I would say she's probably not the most win-reliable sort, but at the odds, I'll take my chance that she gets the trip and at least gets second. Oh, she certainly fits. There's no doubt about it. You mentioned her races last year in North America. They were very good. You also mentioned that she's rank in some of her races. It's imperative for her rider to get her covered up. And I think in this big field, that's going to happen. There should be a too. decent amount of pace, a fair, not a fantastic pace up front. But with her <laughs> kick, I think she'll be closing late. Yeah, I mean, the pace is a concern, but I just, I'm hoping that there are you know, everyone, the riders and the trainers, the owners are looking at the same thing we are, and they're probably seeing that there's not a ton of speed, and there are a couple of horses who can show speed. It could be one of those situations where, you know, two or three different sets of connections want to take the initiative, and at least, I mean, all I ask for in these races is, is an honest tempo so that, unlike last year, a horse from off the pace will have some sort of chance. Now time for the main event on Saturday at Saratoga, the Grade 1 Run Happy Travers. It's the Midsummer Derby at a mile and a quarter. $1.25 million is the purse. We've got to begin with the number six, Tacitus Marcus. Bit of a star-crossed runner. Overcame trouble to win the Wood Memorial, and not a lot has gone right for him since. Uh, yeah, that's true. Although I would say that he had a pretty fair shot in the Kentucky Derby, where he ran well enough. Um, I, there's no question in my mind that he was quote unquote the best horse in both the Belmont and the Jim Dandy, but I just um, I wonder. I, I, I want to ask you, Dan. Do you see this horse as having a, a, a lot of upside? Do you think he has a breakout race in him, or is he kind of he's been going all year? He kind of is what he is. He's plateaued. I mean, what's your feeling about him? I think he is what he is, and he's kind of going to need things to go his way. And at a short price, with what we've seen so far over his last few races, I'm not sure if he's going to get things his way. And I'm interested in your thoughts about the addition of blinkers for yeah. Bill Mott. Mott says there's going to be uh, perhaps enhanced focus with the addition of blinkers. I'm always a bit skeptical with equipment changes before big races. Oh. I, I agree, uh, the blinkers especially. And th what really caught my eye was the abysmal stats that Mott has with, these, with this blinker move. I mean, it's terrible, really, and it's a, a large enough sample. It really makes you wonder. And I don't really get it. The blinkers I saw him working were tiny. They were basically a little more than cheaters. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to be shocked if this horse runs a really good race and wins. Not at all. Um, and I'm not, I'm not like totally against him at all. I mean, and I feel the same way about Code of Honor. I don't, I don't know what your opinions are about him. I'm a little undecided still. I, I, I really, I, I thought he ran a really nice race in the Dwyer. His Derby was pretty good. I still am a little bit skeptical of him getting a mile and a quarter in a higher level company. Um, I do think that he's coming into the race in good form. But my take on the whole three-year-old crop, until proven otherwise, is they are a, a kind of a below average bunch, at least at what we've seen so far, the triple crown races and, and some subsequent performances. I mean, I think maximum security is fine, but I, I don't think he's a great horse. And Mucho Gusto, who's in this race for Baffert, he was supposed to be game winner. This is the substitute horse. He ran up to maximum security in the Haskell and then just got flicked away. I, like he might not really want to stay either. I, so uh, long story short, I'm fishing around for some – New ideas, new faces. I mean, tax is part of this bunch, too. I mean, 
He ran better than I expected in the Jim Dandy. He's got post 12. I know there's a long run into the turn. It's still not a great draw. I just, I can't, I'm not supporting tax today. Um, I'm looking around. I don't, did you have to make picks? Who did you pick in this race? I actually thought that Mucho Gusto is going to get a really nice trip sitting from off the pace. Unfortunately, I think he's going to drop precipitously off of his morning line. But yeah. you mentioned the Haskell, and yes, he was flicked away by maximum security, but I thought he took the worst of it four wide around the first turn, True. made a wide bid on the second turn. I just trust Spafford in these situations, and I think he's going to work out a trip. But I understand your thinking and looking for a price. You're looking for a horse that has some upside potential and also might be dirtied up a bit. Let's look Correct. at looking at Bikini's most recent race. It was in one of the local preps for the Travers. It was the Curlin. And I think you could make an argument. The rail was no good that day. Ooh. This horse made the lead, is down inside, and is very game to re-rally for third. Yeah, I, I'd like to hear somebody make an argument that the rail was not just quicksand that day, if you go through and look at all the races. And it's interesting because Matoli, who runs in the forego earlier in this card, he was stuck on the dead rail the next day. And then... Uh, and Tacitus, too, there's a lot of, of talk about how he ended up down inside as well. But I think the rail was even worse on the 26th of July when looking at bikinis. Castellano tried to make an effort around the first turn to stay a little bit wide, but by the middle of the backstretch, he was pushed down to the rail and he was stuck there the whole rest of the time. Now, how much difference does it make? I mean, I think it made a, a pretty tremendous difference just looking at the card. I think it was one of those pretty radically biased tracks. And I do like the way, as you mentioned, he pushed on at the very end and wasn't giving up at all in what was his first two-turn race. I think the price is going to be right on this horse. I think 10 to 1 is fairly accurate. There's not a lot of pace in this race at all. This horse is fast enough to get the lead if he wants, and at worst, it's going to be sitting very close. Um, Pedigree-wise, I'm a big fan of looking at Lucky at distances. Uh, he's by looking at Lucky. His offspring distances, nine prolongs and beyond. And then if you go through the female family, well, there, it's not a star-studded family. There are so many stamina influences. I just have the sense that despite the fact that this horse won showing a lot of speed going six and a half furlongs in his career debut, he's a strong galloping type that will stay in state. The question, obviously, I think is a quality. We don't know how good he is. He might not be good enough, but I don't know. I mean, Cutting Humor, not a top-class horse, but had his moments this year as a three-year-old. He buried him, albeit on a sloppy track, and his first race back after a long layoff occasion following that debut um, way better than it looks on paper. He got shuffled back, and then he was green in the last furlong. He was going to draw off, and he changed leads late, lost his focus. Um, I think he was far more superior to that bunch than that running line suggests. It just looks like he's been a talking horse, for better or worse, if he needs anything or not, a long four to five in his debut, four to five in his comeback. Even money last time. I like the way he's worked since then. I'm willing to take a shot with a horse like this at double-digit odds in this race. And as to your question about quality, I wholeheartedly agree with you. This three-year-old bunch has been rather underwhelming all year. Perhaps looking at bikinis is ready to take that step up, grab the brass ring, and join the upper echelon, like with horses like Maximum Security. Three value plays on Saturday from Marcus Hirsch. Best of luck.